For the latest information regarding the COVID-19 pandemic in Cupertino, please visit cupertino.org slash coronavirus. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ricardo Romero Morales. I'm a lead public information officer with the County of Santa Clara. Thank you for being here today. Today, we're gonna to be providing an update regarding vaccine supply and eligibility here in Santa Clara County. Today, we're joined by the following speakers. Dr. Marty Fenstershive, COVID-19 testing and vaccine officer for the County of Santa Clara. Dr. Jennifer Tong, Associate Chief Medical Officer for Santa Clara Valley Medical Center. Betty Duan, Public Information Officer with the County of Santa Clara. Supervisor Cindy Chavez from the County of Santa Clara Board of Supervisors and Supervisor Otto Lee, County of Santa Clara Board of Supervisors. We will begin this press conference in English and American Sign Language. We will then move into a section of questions and answers. Right after that, we will move into statements from the podium in Spanish, Chinese, Vietnamese, and Tagalog. Without any further ado, I welcome to the podium, Dr. Marty Fenstershive. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. <clears throat> and um, we're really happy that you're here today. We're very excited about the information that we're gonna provide for all of you today. We're here to provide information and give you some updates on our vaccine supply and our eligibility for appointments here in Santa Clara County. And you know, for a long time, we've been talking about our great capacity that we've had. We just need the vaccine. Well, finally, we're going to see a tremendous increase in the amount of vaccine that we are receiving and an increase in the appointments that we will have available. So this is a really big milestone for our community and the county's efforts in providing the COVID vaccine to our community uh, residents. The county system is receiving a lot of vaccines, significant increase in vaccine supply that's coming directly from the federal government. So this is a part of the allocations that come to us and other locations directly from the federal government, not through the state. Combined with the increase from our states, since we do get additional vaccine from our state normally, we now have enough vaccine really to quickly reach our goal of protecting our entire community against COVID-19. So as of today, all individuals 16 years of age or older who live in Santa Clara County or who work in Santa Clara County can now schedule appointments through the county's website, sccfreevax.org. Again, this is two days earlier to be clear. This is two days earlier than our original decision to um, open up the eligibility on Thursday. So as of today, we will have the appointments, which we will talk about in a minute, but people can make those appointments and start vaccinations today. I also want to provide you with an update on the situation with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, which we've all heard about and have concern. The CDC, the FDA, and the CDPH, California Department of Public Health, have all recommended a temporary halt in the administration of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. And this is following reports of a very rare complication and condition in six patients out of the nearly 7 million persons who have already received their Johnson & Johnson vaccine across the country. The county system and other providers will pause the administration of the J&J &J vaccine while we await further updates from the CDC, from our federal partners, and from the state of California. Those that have existing appointments with J&J &J that perhaps are scheduled to receive a J&J &J vaccine will be accommodated by one of the other vaccines that are available, um, including the Pfizer and Moderna. Approximately 60,000 individuals in the county have received J&J &J vaccine previously. However, these complications that are being reported are extremely, extremely rare. All the cases, just to give you an, a, just a quick overview, all the six cases that were reported among, were among women between the ages of 18 and 48 and had symptoms that occurred between six and 13 days after they received their vaccination. There was one death nationally. 
none of the cases have been reported in California. The CDC will convene its special committee, the ACIP, which is the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices, tomorrow afternoon to discuss this situation and make a decision as to what to do next. For individuals who are concerned because they were amongst the 62,000 people that have received the vaccine in our county, for people that received the vaccine more than a month ago, your risk is very, very low at this time. For people who recently got the vaccine within the last few weeks, they should be aware of some of the symptoms. If you received the vaccine and developed severe headache, abdominal pain, leg pain, shortness of breath, any of those symptoms, you should contact your healthcare provider or seek medical treatment. Again, this, these conditions are extremely rare. None occurred in California. And again, we shall hear, uh, while we're pausing, we will wait the results from the discussions at the federal and state levels. At this, at this time, I would like to uh, introduce Dr. Jennifer Tong, who's leading our vaccine efforts in the field for a, a further update on our capacity and scheduling of our uh, appointments for this week. Hi, I'm Dr. Jennifer Tong, Associate Chief Medical Officer for Santa Clara Valley Medical Center. With this expanded supply of vaccines, the county health system has been able to open up tens of thousands of new appointment slots for the remainder of this week. We'll be adding even more appointments throughout the rest of this week and for the week ahead. Anyone who's age 16 or older who lives or works in our county is encouraged to schedule an appointment as soon as possible. Our county health system staff have been working tirelessly for this moment. We've built the infrastructure and the capacity, and now finally supply has arrived. Appointments can be booked through the county's scheduling website, which can be reached through sccfreevax.org. That's sccfreevax.org. Once on that website, click on the button to book an appointment and select Santa Clara Valley Medical Center. We do anticipate heavy traffic to our website over the next few days with this expansion of eligibility. So please be patient, check back later if the website uh, is temporarily down or if appointments um, are fully booked. New appointments are added regularly by the county health system as well as other vaccine providers throughout Santa Clara County. Those without access to a computer can call 211 or the Valley Connection Call Center at 408-970-2000. Please note that wait times may be longer than usual over the next few days due to the expansion of eligibility. I'd like to thank all of the county staff who have worked day and night, literally, to make this possible. And I'd like to thank the, the support of our Board of Supervisors and County Administration who've dedicated the resources to make sure that we were ready to vaccinate on this large scale. With that, I'd like to go ahead and introduce Betty Duong to share information about our outreach and equity efforts. Hi everyone, my name is Betty Young. I'm a public information officer and also one of the leads on our outreach and education um, engagement efforts here at the county. I'll be talking about our equity work. So throughout the pandemic, we've seen significant disparities in COVID-19 impacts. These disparities can be seen by geography and race and ethnicity. East San Jose and South County residents have been particularly hit hard as our Latinx community and our African and ancestry communities. Um, African-American ancestry communities. These communities also face barriers to vaccine access, language barriers, digital divide, transportation reliance. Those are all, um, those all contribute to the barriers that are preventing our most vulnerable from accessing the vaccines. To this end, to address these barriers and promote equity, a massive part of our county vaccine strategy has been focused on ensuring vaccine access for our hardest hit communities. These efforts include deep community engagement, we have well over 100 community health workers going door to door in our most hardest hit communities, 
iPads in hand to schedule folks for their vaccination appointments, to provide resources, to, ha to answer questions and connect them to further consultation. Um, these, uh, our community health workers are language capable in at least five of the county's threshold languages, English, Spanish, Vietnamese, um, Chinese, Mandarin and Cantonese, and Tagalog. Um, additional language support is readily available should that language need be demonstrated. Um, through this method, through this strategy, we've scheduled more, we are, we are scheduling more than a thousand residents uh, per week for vaccination appointments. We've also established five mobile vaccination teams who are providing pop-up vaccination clinics most days of the week, offering on-site vaccine access to impacted neighborhoods and workers and medically vulnerable residents. Through this strategy, we've delivered more than 20,000 doses through our mobile vaccine program. Language accessibility is baked into every part of our COVID response. Um, this is not something that, that this is something that you see in our communications, at our press conferences, on our website. So language will not be a barrier any to to our vaccination, our out, outreach, education, our engagement efforts. Um, equity is not just a feature of our vaccine strategy; it is a central component of the work that we're doing. It is expanding every day. We're adding more to it every day, because never has there been a time when it's been more clear that the wellness of our most vulnerable community members determine the success of our county in the fight against COVID-19. Um, at this time, I am going to introduce Supervisor Cindy Chavez. Thank you. I am really here to offer a, a big thanks. Um, we rely so much on our federal and state partners to determine how we can respond on the ground. And this um, big frankly, cache of vaccines is really thanks to our delegation. I want to call out specifically Congresswoman Zoe Lofgren, who was formerly a member of the Board of Supervisors and I think really understands the importance of federally qualified health centers, meaning all of the different locations that we have in our community to get this vaccine out. I also wanted to thank Speaker Nancy Pelosi because they're really paying attention to what's happening at, on the, at the grassroots level. And of course, um, Congress members uh, Ro Khanna and Congresswoman Anna Eshoo. I just wanted to highlight one of the points that Betty raised um, and then I want to say one more thanks and that is this. Our objective is to get as many people in our community across the finish line as possible. And we have to do it recognizing that we need everybody to get vaccinated. So one, we really are asking for you to be patient. Two, we're asking you to be persistent. And three, if you're in a community where you, you don't have access to a computer, please dial 211. Our goal is to help you get vaccinated. Just to wrap up, I wanted to comment on something that Dr. Tong um, raised. These are really very challenging. Um, this is a challenging logistical exercise. And as I think about the fact that in Santa Clara County, we actually have the ability to vaccinate almost 30,000 people a day, thanks to the really good work of the staff here, our public and private partners, including our nonprofit health clinics. It makes me not just proud to be part of Santa Clara County, it also makes me hopeful that we're getting closer and closer to being able to beat back COVID-19. So I wanted to say a very special thank you, uh, Dr. Tong, to you. She hasn't slept in a very long time and still has kept her good humor. Um, and to Marty um, and to all the other folks that are part of our public health system and our county system and our nonprofit partners. Now with that, it gives me great pleasure to introduce one of my colleagues, Supervisor Otto Lee. Thank you, uh, Supervisor Chavez. Uh, today is a really exciting day. My name's Otto Lee, uh, County Supervisor of Santa Clara County, representing District 3. Why I say today is a really exciting day is as follows. Number one, we have just announced that we're gonna open up earlier, a couple of days earlier, to allow everyone over 16 years old to be able to get vaccinated. In other words, everybody except kids now will be able to get the vaccine immediately. And that's really a game changer because we've been looking for this day for a long time. Our biggest bottleneck for all this time has been the actual supply of the vaccines. And we have mainly been getting vaccine from the state. The really great news today that we receive is that we're receiving more than a quarter million dollar, do, uh, quarter million doses of vaccines of Pfizer. And we are still doing the inventory as we speak. Uh, 
and we're expecting another 40 some thousand of Moderna Pfizer, uh, uh, vaccine as well, adding to close to 300,000 vaccines that we're expecting to receive. The importance of this is you can look at the scale. We've been only receiving anywhere between 50 to 70,000 from the state every week for the past few weeks. This is close to five times, four to five times the supply we've been getting. And our county has ramped up to the capacity of able to deliver over 200,000 vaccines a week. And so we've been waiting for this day for a long, long time. And this is really the game changer that we are hoping to get the word out to everybody to go ahead and get signed up immediately at sccfreevax.org. And the website has different languages as well. And please go ahead and sign up and don't wait. I know some people have some doubts regarding hearing the news about the Johnson Johnson vaccine. Uh, right now, the state, uh, the county will not be administering that, and we will not give any vaccines unless we are clear that these are the ones that we are sure they are safe for everybody. And that's why Moderna and Pfizer vaccines are the ones that we're giving out. And whichever vaccine you can get right now, I would say is a good vaccine, and please go ahead and do that as soon as possible. Another message I want to say, uh, in addition to thanks that Supervisor Chavez has mentioned to our congressional delegations and the leaders, I also want to say, thank uh, my old boss in Iraq, General Gus Perna, who I've written to a couple of times, asking him to supply us the vaccine directly from the federal government. And the latest tranche of vaccines received are for our federally qualified health clinic. So I want to thank him for his efforts to help us get the vaccines we need to get out this COVID situation and really get to see the light at the end of a tunnel. As much as we have this good news right now, we still need to remain vigilant. Getting a vaccine does not mean you're safe. After the vaccines, you need to have two doses, and you actually have to wait a couple of weeks after the second dose to be fully vaccinated. So the important thing is still got to wear your mask. And as you can see, I'm wearing two masks. So we've got to do a social distancing, washing your hands, all those important things. But we're really, really close to the end at this point. And so I'm so excited to see that we've got the vaccines. Come on out. Please make sure everybody get vaccinated as soon as possible. That's the best way we could finally open up the economy and regain our freedom. Thank you very much for being here today. Thank you, everyone. We'll now move to the question and answer portion of the press conference before moving on to the Spanish section. We'll start with NBC. Please identify who your question is for. Dr. Petrichide, do you feel like you won the lottery? Do you see the finish line from where you're at now? And does that mean Levi Stadium at full capacity from here? Well, I've never won a lottery before. Um, we're, we're really very, very happy. Um, and we're so excited because we have seen that our demand has outweighed our capacity for a long time. So now we're going to be able to meet that need, that demand. We're excited at all our locations, that our, all of our providers will now be able to provide additional vaccines to their capacity. Um, and again, this is going to, it's not going to all happen tomorrow. So people, again, um, be patient. You will get your turn. And uh, remember the Pfizer and Moderna still require two doses, so we're hopeful in the next few months that we will absolutely be in a safer place in this community. Um, I don't have the number of the exact number of vaccines of Johnson & Johnson that we are holding on to. It's just a, probably a few thousand doses. Um, we could get you that information. As far as outreaching to those communities, you're absolutely right. We certainly have utilized that one shot and done vaccine in places where it might be difficult to get people back. Um, and we, since all of this just happened this morning, we are absolutely working uh, to make sure that we outreach the communities. We certainly are switching out all of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine and making the proper, 
arrangements to make sure that any dose that we give a Moderna, Moderna or Pfizer will be followed up by a second dose. So all of that is ongoing. Well, um, I think everyone here has been very aggressively seeking the vaccine. I, I think when you look at the numbers over the last several months, Santa Clara County, in my view, hasn't really gotten the fair share that it really should have uh, given our population. So I think this is the appropriate amount of vaccine that we should be getting. And um, again, these are federal allocations directly because of our federally qualified uh, centers that we have, and we do have a number of them. So I think it's appropriate that we're getting this vaccine. Well, this really isn't related to the tiers. Again, I think it's more important that we give the vaccines to drop our case rates, to drop the transmission. And as transmission drops, because we'll vaccinate more, we'll have less cases, less, tr less variants. And as we have less cases and the case rate goes down, then we can begin looking at any type of movement out to a um, less restrictive tier. So Levi's is doing a record high number today. They're up to 10,000 today. Uh, it is busy, but from what I've heard, I'm headed there next, from what I've heard, the lines are constantly moving. Um, so moving a lot of people through a large space. Um, and we will continue to increase the volume there um, over the next week. One of the challenges we've had over the last almost six weeks now is not having enough vaccine um, and not wanting to have people just sitting completely idle. So there's a bit of a ramp up phase for us to bring in even more staff um, to reach our full capacity. <laughs> well, like Marty, I also have never uh, won the jackpot or the lottery, um, but but yes, after after many many weeks of waiting and waiting, this was a very um, pleasant and welcome surprise. I think the important thing to realize about this side effect of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is exactly how rare it is. Uh, so less than one in a million um, of the people who received the Johnson & Johnson vaccine uh, had this complication. And this complication also can happen spontaneously and rarely um, at an equally high rate in the general population. So um, it's very hard to say conclusively that this, this um, condition is directly related to the vaccine. Um, since it is a condition that we see in people who've never received a Johnson & Johnson vaccine. So I think it's out of an abundance of caution that the CD is making this current recommendation um, to continue evaluating the data and determine if, it's, um, uh, if it continues to be something that we should hold and preferentially um, focus on the other vaccines. Well, so studies are ongoing in terms of the vaccination of uh, children between the ages of 12 and 16. Um, and uh, we await for further information from the CDC and the FDA in terms of approval for that age group. But once approved, we stand ready to uh, offer vaccinations to that age group as well. Um, and uh, uh, further decrease the number of, of cases we're seeing in that age group. Uh, at this point, I, I don't know a time frame on that. NBC, sorry, last one. In, in San Mateo County, uh, Jansen is about 4% of overall doses there. Is it about the same here in this county? What is it? Ooh, about 5%? Yeah. 5%.
So does it mitigate the fact that we don't have that much um, vaccine and then we can pull it out of circulation? And the answer is yes, it's, it's 5% of all of our vaccine. So we can easily switch out uh, one of the other vaccines for the Johnson & Johnson and it, has an, it will not show much of an impact um, with our ability to vaccinate in the, into the future. And so no canceled appointments? No canceled appointments. For the latest information regarding the COVID-19 pandemic in Cupertino, please visit cupertino.org slash coronavirus.